This is the Finesse Media Podcast, Season 3. Oh, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another episode of Finesse Media Podcast. Join with me in the studio today. I cannot wait uh, to introduce y'all. For those who already can see us, you already can see who's in the building with me today joining on Finesse Media Podcast Season 3. None other than the comedian extraordinaire, legendary Hope Flood in the building. What's up, Hope? <laughs> Hey, Ken, how are you, babe? I'm very well. Give me a second. I want to put my picture up for those that you can see, man. Hope is a legend. This is the Finesse Media Podcast, Season 3. Yeah, Finesse Media Podcast, Season 3. So we got Hope in the building. Hope, how you been? I've been okay, you know, trying to stay Rona free. (laughs) You know, stay safe and alive. I know. How about you? I've been very well, Hope. Um, as, as mentioned uh, before you came on, I was telling the, uh, the listeners that the first time I met you, Hope, and you may not remember this, you meet a lot of different people. So again, thank you for taking the time to uh, join the podcast. But the first time I met of you course. was in, in Chicago uh, with Buff Bay Lucas. Do you remember Buff Bay? Of course you do. Rashida of course. Buff Bay Where Lucas. Is Buff? Where's Buff at? Buff in Chicago still. Oh, she was on her way then she met some new dude and they were doing prepaid legal selling no need <laughs> juice and a bond and then she just went away and got i'm like you know that happens to us as female comedians all the time we get pregnant gotta raise our kids and, and we just fall by the wayside and never really recover yeah buff bay is doing her thing she has a podcast you know she's a twin so uh her and her twin yeah. sister dalila they're doing their podcast um, in Chicago. They so, are, I want to say, identical. She said they are like one in one million where they are identical, where their fingerprint and DNA is <laughs> the same. So yeah. one could commit a crime and they would say it was the other one because that's how I said, really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's what's up. No, Buff Bay, shout out to you, Buff Bay. She's a listener. She yeah, actually shout out to Buff. I love Buff. Yeah, but Hope, uh, Hope you've been uh, so I met you uh, doing something in a, in a uh, salon just to kind of circle back on that story. And it was like a relationship topic okay. stuff. And you talk shit about them Virgos too, but uh, okay. Cheap motherfuckers. And so- <laughs> cheap motherfuckers. Well, cheap for no reason. Cheap. We, we just got to make sure that we don't spend frugally and just, we just can't make sure we spend on anything. <laughs> okay, that's true. <sweet. laughs> but you're staying good and fabulous. Hope, again, good to see you. And you're working on a couple of different things. I want to start right where we know you from the comic uh, realm and circle. So the uh, Comic Rock Convention, CEO of that. Tell us about that. What are you working on with that? Well, you know, the corona killed it. We usually do it every April, at the end of April. And so I have been trying to, after the corona came and they shut down all the clubs in L.A. and they shut it down, I had to push it back. I was going to do it in August. And we're still not open, Mm -hmm. you know, as far as clubs and stuff. The restaurants are open. But as far as clubs and going out at night and stuff, we're still shut down. Yeah. And everything. So that's, you know, so I'll just have to do it next April. But basically, the Comic Rock Convention is something I came up with uh, that God dropped to my spirit to educate uh, young comedians, aspiring comedians, veteran comedians, intermediate comedians about the business of comedy Mm -hmm. and that it is a business. Um, Getting on stage is, we got that. You know how to be funny and that's half the battle. But do you know the business? Do you know how to sign a contract? Do you know how to negotiate getting your own room? Do you know how, do you know that you have other talents inside of you? And comedy is just not your only talent. You know, like Buff used to come and now she's doing radio. And, you know, I have people doing all kinds of stuff now. They're doing uh, 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 walk-on parts on shows and things just from coming to the Comics Rock Convention. So this was our eighth year doing it, eighth or ninth year doing it. And and at first I started it for females because I felt we were so behind the men. And then the men started threatening me and calling me and talking about, we're going to put on a dress and a wig and, and we come and I'm like, don't hide behind the convention. Use that as an excuse to put on a dress and a wig and some heels if that's what you do. And so I, bre- I rebranded it in 2013 and named it the Comics Rock Convention and allowed everybody to come. And it, and, and it has it's, it's amazing. Comics come from all over the country for workshops and seminars, and they get to showcase at LA's Main Street Comedy Club, which is important because 
you can't walk into an LA club and get on stage. Mm. They're not allowing it. And so somebody has to recommend you or, or walk you in the door and stuff. So just for them to have that opportunity and to be able to meet other amazing comedians that they're, they're, these friendships are formed and bonds are made that now you know somebody in Atlanta and Detroit and Chicago and you can go to all of those cities and perform places you've never been before. And that, that was my goal with it. And um, I've achieved that. And so now I'm just waiting on next year to really do it bigger and better. Yeah, because I remember when um, Buff and I was working together in Chicago, she'll be like, Ken, I'm going to L.A. And it's a weekend thing. So you wouldn't just do this workshop for a day or so. It would be for a weekend and they'll have brunch. And I've seen the pictures with you ladies went all white. It was a fun time. Well, it's still a fun time, but I'm glad you include the guys in it now. Yeah, I mean, we have 30 workshops and seminars because there's so much to learn that's about the true. business, you know, and, and that's why it was a week long. People are like, I can't stay in L.A. a week and I can't afford to come. I was like, you know, you can't afford not to come. And it's an investment in your career, just like any other investment. Mm -hmm. People think that when actors get up there and act, you think when, um, uh, of course, with a company, you can't go to a dialogue know that you know whatever and these people take continuously continuous workshops they have acting coaches and stuff and the same thing with comedy mm -hmm. you know whatever so they learn that coming you know whatever and coming continuously and they're like oh some of the classes are the same well if you haven't applied it then you still need it mm -hmm. you know whatever so you know it, it's really a great event it's really yeah, rewarding and and people are overwhelmed and they cry they don't want to leave they don't want to go over <laughs> And I try to keep it reasonable, you know, so people can come. L.A. is expensive, mm -hmm. you know, and after a couple of days, it, it's expensive. And I teach them how to bunk, bunk up with a couple of, you know, people in the room. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be in the room. You're going to have enough time to shit, shower, shine, and get ready for the next event. And they <laughs> realize that, you know, by coming. And it's fast paced and it's a lot of fun, you know, whatever. So I'm looking forward to doing it again next year. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to be something to look out for, y'all. Uh, like I say, uh, males and female comics, so excited about that. So how are you dealing uh, during this time for the corona? I had Lunell on last season. Her ass talked so much shit. And we were at the top of the corona, so she wasn't even letting folks in the house. <laughs> so how are you managing with the corona, whole being creative? I Look, I see you kicking it with Lunell, so I know you're still having a good time at the barbecue, and you're still creative. But how are you dealing with all of this shit during this corona? Yeah, I make her I make her invite me. She don't never want to invite me. I make her I'm like, if you don't let me up in there, I'm gonna do a drive by. She live in the hood. So I was like, bitch, I'll do a drive by over there. And so, so she's like, all right, bitch, you can come. Or whatever. And mm -hmm. then I'll be the life of the party. They like, you come up. I said, I am the motherfucking backyard. <laughs> I am the motherfucking body. And so and whatever. And I bring all my edibles and, and we, we don't talk about like, that. Oh my god. <laughs> And everything and uh Linnell's my bestie and stuff we travel on the road together you know whatever but yeah at, at the top of it we were like can it's been it's been a trip because people don't realize that yeah this is we make people laugh and comedy is it's really for us <laughs> we do it y'all think it's for y'all but it's for us and it's our therapy mm -hmm. so just imagine not being able to go to therapy for five or six months or seven months or something like that, you know, you 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 become very very um, disenchanted and very stir crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, I see a lot of comedians now on social media, and I'm like, that nigga ain't gonna make it. <laughs> he is <gonna laughs> spiraling. That nigga ain't gonna make it or whatever. He don't get on the stage because we love the love of the fans mm -hmm. and being out and the pictures and autographs and just making people laugh and getting love. You know, to be at home by yourself, a lot of people don't like themselves right. or whatever. So they, they like, oh, I, they don't like their spouse. They don't like their kids. They have realized, you know, I live alone. Lunell lives alone. So we, we okay. I'm good with me because we spend mm -hmm. a lot of time on the road in hotels, you know, by ourselves and stuff. So I'm good. I don't travel with an entourage of people or nothing like that. So I'm good, mm -hmm. you know. But the average person, that's not, you know, they're not cool with it and stuff. But I have been working my other businesses and stuff. so. Um, and then I, I went on a road about a month ago to Dallas. I was going to mention, station. I, uh, didn't catch you out there. I believe you were at Arlington and, uh, I didn't catch you and I didn't, I guess I didn't even know you were in town, but I saw that you were in, in Dallas and that's some place that you also been. So let's talk about that. In 2004, you was in Dallas. 
BJ and the Morty. So I'm in Dallas, Texas right now, too, by the way. Oh, wow. I love Dallas. Dallas is truly, really my third home because I grew up in Michigan. I moved to California, Los Angeles, when I was six. Mm -hmm. And then I had never moved anywhere for a long term. I stayed in Dallas seven years or whatever. So Dallas is like my third home. Then Atlanta's like my fourth home. I'm in, I'm in like the witness protection program or some shit or whatever. <laughs> and then and then I moved back home in 2012, back to LA. Mm -hmm. And this is where I've been and stuff. But yeah, I, I, I was on the radio. We took the station from a 0 0.09 to a 2.4 in less than two years. And that's unheard of in radio, mm -hmm. you know. And the only reason we're not on it anymore is because of this. We got caught up in all the syndication with mm -hmm. Steve Harvey and Tom mm -hmm. and Ricky. Yeah. Otherwise, we would still be on the air. You know, we, we really had a good run and it was well. And I, I, I didn't know I knew how to do radio. Mm -hmm. Until I did radio, and I was like, "Shit, I'm born to do radio," <laughs> you know, whatever. And I had a team that I work with that really allowed me to be me, mm -hmm. and really allowed me to say whatever I wanted to say. And the owner, Hyman Child, he was like, "Even if we get sued, help. I got 12 lawyers. Don't worry about it. Just be you. <laughs> Just don't tell us." And had an FCC on our ass or whatever, mm -hmm. and they allowed me to to just be me, and yeah. um, it was amazing. Um, at first, it started off a little rocky because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very open and liberal. Very and, honest. Yeah, and then and transparent. And then coming to the Bible Belt, mm -hmm. where people are like, eh. and my co-worker's first question was, when we got on the air, was, Hope, would you sleep with somebody on the first date? I was like, yeah, because I need to know what they're working with. <laughs> oh, my God, all these women called the station, talking about, this ain't California. We don't do that here. Mm -hmm. And this and that. And one lady called and said, they a damn lie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, damn long. You and know said, Dallas is one of those on places home where it's it's a melting pot. You have some conservatives, but then you have some very, you know, strong left liberals. So uh I'm from Chicago. So a lot so of you, new people. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So there's a lot of transplants in Dallas now because mm -hmm. a lot of people from California moved there because yeah. it's so cheap, the housing and stuff. Because when I got down there and I bought a house. And I, I was like, I was looking around the houses. I called all my friends in LA. I said, y'all better get down and buy some shit before they figure this shit out, okay? No, seriously. And, That's what my yeah. cousin, I had a cousin who actually moved this early, earlier part of this year from LA. And she not only hope got a house, but the chick got, uh, well, she's a landlord. She got a four uh, a sub uh, unit four uh, apartments and uh, maybe I'm telling all the business and people don't know who she is. But I mean, she came and really finessed the game. And I just want to keep, you know, with that finesse in the game, uh, Hope, you have finessed the game for so, so many years. I remember growing up watching you on Comic View, and this, that's why I say it's like crazy to be interviewing you now because I remember watching you on Comic View, holding it down as one of the powerful females, also having your own set there. But I said, this woman is kicking ass, taking names, and telling jokes with a suit. I had never seen a comedian uh, that was on stage telling jokes in a suit. And with a fire as a uh, blind, you know, situation going on up top, man. Hope I loved you so much. I still love you now. But that's when I first saw you. And I, I, like I say now, full circle to have you on. So Comet View, that's where you, I saw you start. I know your career maybe goes back before then. But on Comet View, do you ever want it to, to say to BET, damn, why don't y'all get your shit together and get a Comet View reunion? With all the greats and legends. No, fuck no. no. And stuff no. <laughs> they treated us so bad. Man. They treated us so bad. They gave us $150 for eight years. We never got any residual money or whatever. We had to fight them, you know, to get the money up after years and years and years of giving us $150. Key medias would come from all over the world and they would they 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 spend their whole rent money. They wouldn't even put them up in a place to stay or give them a per diem or or anything, or, or, or a hotel room, and half of them niggas stayed in my house, you know, <laughs> whatever, and so, um, no, they, and then, and, and when we realized how we were supposed to be treated mm -hmm. was when we went to do Def Jam, and Def Jam flew us in, put us up in the hotel, picked us up in limos, gave us clothes to wear, gave us a per diem every day, you had your own assistant pretty much, and they treated us well, we went back and were like, shit, we, you know, when you know better, you do better. Right. And we were like, oh, no, we're not having this shit from you motherfuckers no more. And so, so un unless they, you know, Comedy View was the number one rated show on BET. Yes, it was. And, and 40 million people watch Comedy View every single day. 
And so for them to say we didn't have the money or this and that to really pay us what we were worth or for us to not get a residuals, they never managed people out of it. They never did a BT Comic View tour. They just didn't manage it right. And they didn't, they didn't respect comedians. But I will say to their credit, they did make a lot of stars. Comic View made a lot of stars. They, they put a lot of people on and gave us a lot of exposure for us to travel all over the world and sell our venues and things like that. So, you know, it's almost like, mm, you know, it's the good over here, here's the right. pros, here's the cons and stuff or whatever. And so you just roll with the punches and parlay it into what you needed to. And a lot of people did. Some more and Arnaz J and Earthquake and Cheryl and, and all of the people, Jamario and Chucky Ducky, all the people who had a good run would have never had that exposure mm -hmm. had it not been for Comic View. So we're grateful for them for that only. Well, let's keep it popping, moving. <laughs> let's keep it my popping and moving and getting past BET. Uh, enough, enough of that because, okay. again, Hope, you got a lot of stuff that we want to talk about, what you're doing. So keeping it popping with your lip gloss. What's going on with that? Because you pop it on the screen now. So what's up with this? <laughs> what's popping with your new lip, lip gloss lip line? Glitter. My lip glitter is called Hope Lips. And yeah. they can go to Hope Lips with two S. H O P E L I P S S dot com and order it. And just one day I had some lip glitter I had bought and I wore it on stage. And about 10 women came up to me and asked me, Where'd you get that from? And it was me and Lunell were on tour together. And she said, I think you should get some of that and sell it. And so I started researching it and stuff. And I found a company that wholesaled it and sold, sold it in bulk. And I got a name for it and everything. And I, I sell it on the road. I have, uh, I think it's 15 different. Uh, colors. I have one after my good girlfriend, Lunell. It's called Hey Lunell. I have a hope. I have a my other good good girlfriend, He She We, from your your Shy Town friend who just was nominated for an Emmy for his uh performance with uh She Ready uh Flame Monroe. I have one called Flame. Shout out to Flame. I have one called your homeboy from Shy Town. I got one called Barack. I got Idris. I got. So I named them all these names and stuff or whatever, so they can, it's just fun. That's and it's a lip glitter. It's That's not lipstick, glitter. You put it on top of lipstick. That's and your lipstick popping. That's what's up. So can you, and this is another good segue, so can you wear this lip gloss and, and pop it when you indulge in some of this cannabis stuff that you got going on? Because this line is crazy. Hi, Hope. Dot biz. Check it out. I'll put it out there already because I'm sure she can tell you a lot more about it, but what the hell is going on with that line? I'm in Dallas, Texas. We're not legal here, but we would love to try it. Uh, but I'm just saying, oh, listen, what's going on with that shit? I've seen the edible blunt. What yes. is up with that? The edible blunt is something new on the line. It is a cannabis infused, uh, infused and medicated means the same thing. So it's TH infused and medicated. Tootsie roll, melt it down, and then mm. on the inside, that's a rice crispy, a medicated rice crispy nugget, and then it's rolled into a blunt, and it's like 500 milligrams of heaven. <laughs> yes, indeed, yeah. I've seen it, and on your page, and, and so many other things on your website too. Again, highhope.biz. We'll put it all in our handler anyway. But man, so what gave you this idea? I know you're in LA, so you're surrounded environment affects behavior. But you're surrounded by so many hustles. Well, yeah, you, you know, it's legal. It's legal in L.A. We're the second state to go legal after Denver. Mm -hmm. And then in July of last year, we went recreational. And so that means you can grow nine plants at your house if you want to, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And so um, I got into this business when I moved back home in 2012. My son smoked so much goddamn weed. I was like, shit, I got to figure out a way to capitalize on this. <laughs> and right. so this is me and I, this is me and I business. This is our family business together okay. and um and so i'm teaching him about being a businessman being his own entrepreneur with something that he loves and he's passionate about which is weed and, and, and cultivating weed and smoking and you know he's an amazing rapper and stuff so that's a part of that culture mm -hmm. you know whatever and so i got into it and basically i got into it by going to the dispensary and buying brownies and selling them and stuff and then i i and so now here we are a hundred and 60 products later, mm. you know, eight years later. And most of the things I make myself, I do, I make weed juice, I make uh, brownies, cookies, I make everything fresh. So when you order it, you get it right, you know, you, it's made to order. And um, the gummies and everything, people love to, you know, uh, 
with especially with this pandemic going on yeah. a lot of people are home, their anxiety is high mm-hmm. you know whatever so it really has taken off since then mm-hmm. you know and so i um it's, it's, it's a great business and stuff because I'm, I want to heal people. I want people to be educated mm-hmm. on the benefits of cannabis and CBD mm-hmm. and that it is a healer and that it is not drugs. Prescription yes. drugs is both. Yes. Okay. Amen. It will never heal you. It is putting a Band-Aid on a... That's right. No, CBD it's will not. heal you. It's been around 100,000 years. God used it. Jesus used it in the, in the Bible days to heal people. It was called cannabosium or strange plant or flax. So it's been around. This is not new. Um, and so, you know, different strains have different effects, do different things. Then there's CBD, which stands for cannabis oil. And that doesn't have THC in it, but it does have a healing effect. And it deals with all your anxiety, your pain, your PTSD, your, your, your trauma, all your trauma, your molestation, your rape, your car accident. And that's what CBD does. And, um, so it's just one of those things and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I love doing this business. I love uh, the healing effects. I love people say your, your products uh, stopped my pain. I was mm-hmm. able to go to sleep or, or, you know, I was able to heal with it and things like that. And the way my doctor telling people to not take their medication, but what I'm saying eventually is preventative enough where you could get off medication eventually. And I study and breathe this stuff every single day mm-hmm. and I learn new things about this plant you know every day that I implement in my business I'm getting ready to start growing this is my last this is the last come last piece of my business is to become the first black female comedian grower mm. and have my own brain and stuff so that's on down the line well we're gonna be back in uh and watching uh all of that and, and then like I say I mean making folks laugh uh hope is what you've done uh, and then now serving the community by giving folks a way of being calm and still uh, through cannabis, but through philanthropy too, because we, we know you again as the comic and somebody that's really, you know, just funny and around the way girl and really super natural uh, and honest, right? But being a, being a philanthropist and being someone in the community is certainly something that you do well. And I want to talk about the SOY, the Saving Our Youth uh, program. Talk to the, our listeners about that program and what you do with that foundation. You know, um, I was I was violated and molested as a child, and so it when my friend who brought it to me that he was doing that, I was like, I need to be involved. I want to be, you know, one of the spokespersons for that, and um, and so it was very he was very, very passionate about it, and I really helped him get it to the next level and build the site, and then he died. He mm-hmm. died this year. He's a fellow comedian and friend, and he died. And I don't know who's running it now or anything. I think they're still just trying to get over him dying in his sleep and stuff. But I, I think that with technology and how close kids are to their parents and stuff now, mm-hmm. I, I don't understand why this is still happening. I don't understand why kids are not coming forward and being more vocal about being violated. Mm-hmm. And, not, and, and really parents knowing what the signs are. You know, us having a brochure. They have one about domestic violence. And we I didn't know what domestic violence was until I saw a brochure on domestic violence. And I was like, oh, he just wants to spend time with me and, and stuff. He doesn't want me around my friends. He's trying to protect me. He, oh, he thinks my family is crazy and stuff. All of that is abuse, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And we don't know that at the time. We don't know what that is, you know. Um, and so we, we don't know that your uncle wants you to sit on his lap all the time. That's inappropriate. Or him want to bring you candy or take you to the store or making inappropriate comments like, girl, you getting big. Look how you growing. We know what you mean. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With it and stuff. And we don't, we didn't know that and everything. And it's been going on way, way too long. And so, and it's, it's harder for, and, and what I did was I broke that generational curse because I don't molest. My son doesn't molest. I've always protected him when he wanted to go to somebody's house. You know, I always went over there, see who lived there, what they talked about. Is there a crackhead cousin? A what the fuck cousin? y'all doing over there? Oh, mm-hmm. Who was that? Yeah, who, I, I want to see the mama. And she, <laughs> you know, what, what's her thing? Because a lot of men's first encounter with women and sex is through uh, an older babysitter mm-hmm. or somebody's, you know, one of his friend's mamas or something like that. And boys don't heal the same way and get over it the same like girls do. 
thing, somehow women and girls know how to bounce back better. And I don't know if that comes from slavery or whatever, or, the, or just our resilience and, and things like that. So it's just something that's very, very dear to my heart. And when I see these signs, like I tell people all the time, if you take your kids to somebody's house and they scream bloody murder and don't want to be over there, something is going yeah, on there. Definitely, definitely. Something is happening. And so that's what made me get involved in it and stuff. And I have, I, I'm going to pick back up, pick it back up again, you know, but my friend who started it, he's a comedian, uh, Belly Bell, we call him out of Oklahoma City. He passed away earlier this year, not for mm-hmm. Corona, he just mm-hmm. died in the city. And so I, it's really probably on pause right now. So yeah, it's very dear to my heart. Well, definitely. I hope I just wanted to spotlight that because again, you you see the you see the person, but a lot of times we're doing you know as as artists and entertainers, you're doing so many different things behind the scenes that not even for nothing, the media won't even spotlight. So some negative shit, quick, they'll put hope on shade room real quick, but it's some positive they won't spotlight that. So on this podcast, just as I as, as I wrap up, we always talk to people uh, hope, hope that's finessing the game. As I mentioned, your peer Lunell, as we know, has been finessing the game. So you are now Vanessa of the Finesse Media Podcast, and that means that that person is okay. that means that person is really uh, operating in the highest level of their craft. And so again, I thank you for joining on um, this podcast and this episode. But before I let you go. Tell me, who is your finesse? Who is somebody who you look to? And we ask all of our guests this: Who's your finesse? So not necessarily somebody you em, you you know emulate or try to model after, but just somebody you say, yeah, that person's finesse in the game, and they have been continuously uh, finesse in the game. Who is that person for Hope Flood? You know, I, I I I I my girl, I have a few: Flay Monroe, Tiffany Haddish, Lunell inspires me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm on that Niecy Nash shit. I like how Niecy didn't do what she did and, and came out and everything and, you know, and, 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 and so I'm, I'm inspired by boss bitches. Mm-hmm. I love women who are about their business and about their game and, and on their hustle and everything and they look good doing it and they're not afraid to be vocal about things that issues and things that are wrong. You know, this Black Lives Matter and all this stuff that's going on and, you know, whatever, you know, the, 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 the way they're killing us and doing stuff to us and stuff. We just got to be aware and stuff. But I, I, you know, I have my people, um, you know, I, I, I look up to my son. I think he's an amazing person. I think I raised a, a really good kid. I mean, what I want him to be, but he's showing what he could be, you know? And so, mm-hmm. and I know he fights every day, you know, to be a good person as a black man living in America, living in California. And I tell him to stay out of harm's way. So I, 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 I you know, I'm, 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 I'm blessed and, and, and proud of him, you know, for staying out of gangs, off drugs and, you know, out of jail and things like that. Well, you know, he had no choice because I invented, put your knee on a nigga neck. I invented that. Okay? <laughs> I'm still on his neck. He's 34 and I'm still on his neck, you know, and I told him to the day I die, I'm still be your mama and I'm still tell you what is right. And if I see you doing wrong, it is my job to try to steer you in the right direction. Now, whether you listen to it or apply it, that's on you, but you can't say you ain't never been told. So, you know, those people inspire me. You know, I have a lot of inspiration around me, you know, to be a better person and level up and and step my game up, you know, whatever. And so that's what I do. Spoken like a true cancer. Yes, cancer, (laughs) cancer is the building. See, look, my wife a cancer, so I know that cancer talk shit. Let me tell you, straight uh, shooters, which is why I love a cancer. You, you oh. Yeah, yeah. So listen, I, but I love a cancer though because you guys talk more shit than a little bit. And um, be honest though, that's what well, it we is. We got so. a heart of gold. We got a heart of gold. We got your back. Yeah. We 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 gonna elevate you. We gonna be there for you. She she probably in the in the in the other room getting coffee and water and doing stuff. <laughs> and to, and that's who we are. And you had to marry her because. You, After if two you don't, weeks, hope. amazing people. After We're amazing weeks. people. After two weeks, you knew. Yeah. After two weeks, we got married. How long y'all been married? Almost seven years. So, and then no problem. No problem. Well, I mean, you know, you're almost. You're, 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 you're common you know, shit. You know, you're shit. Yeah. You know, what, shit. You, she, she frugal, <laughs> but she, she'll splurge in a minute. Yeah. You know, she's moody. You know, I'm moody. I learned <laughs> how to do that, you know, and, and we don't know why we're like this. We don't have she a clue. She doesn't know. No, we don't know. We don't know. Some days I just go dark or sometimes, and I, I, what I have learned, Ken, is that when I do it or I feel something, I'll just tell somebody, look, 
it ain't personal against you. It's just I'm ruled by the sun and the moon and stuff. The wind can blow. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I, I can't do it right now. I'm, I'm just in a mood. And it's not. And then we snap out and we the life of the party. We are amazing people. Yes. We got your back. We ride with you till the wheels fall off. No. And I know she's an amazing person. Mm. I know she is. No, July 13th, she is an amazing person. July 15th. Okay, July 5th. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's me. Yeah. Oh, so you turned up on the 4th and the 5th. Yeah, yeah, my mother tried to have me on the fourth. I wouldn't come out. Because I wouldn't come out. So it is what it is and everything. So, you know, but listen, I, I made 54 and I'm I'm grateful. Get the fuck out of here. I'm you know, when I both. heard you say you got a 34 year old, for those that's not watching us, I did a little shock, but okay, hope. Keep keep on lifting, keep on smiling, keep on making me smile, man. That's amazing, man. That's I got you. Certainly amazing. Thank hope. You. Listen, for those that's listening, tell folks how they can keep up with you, Hope, and the projects that you have coming up, and not only the things that you got coming up, the shit that you already got available. So how folks can find it, buy it, and support. Okay, my, my cannabis business, highhopes.biz, is that my, my lip glitter, Hope Lips, H-O-P-E, L-I-P-S-S dot com. If they just want hopeflood.com to read about me or they want to hit me on Instagram, it's hope.flood on Instagram and it's hopeflood on Facebook. So everything Hope Flood, just punch it in and something going to come up, you're going to find me. I answer all of my inboxes, my DMs, my emails. I answer everything. I'm very, very uh, interactive with my fans and people that want to know about me. I'm very, very interactive with them. So I don't have an assistant and answering it or anything like that. You actually talking to me. No, that's 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. This is actually yeah, how this happened. Hope was going live and I say, hey, you all look do the finesse media. And she was like, hey, just hit me up. So what she's saying is 100, yeah. man. She hit me right up or I, I hit her right up and she responded yeah. right away on the live. People just hope, 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 hope. She said, he said, okay, finesse media, hit me up, hit me up. So 100, like I say, once again, a cancer, man, real deal, holy feel. Ain't no game plan, man. So uh, a straight shooter. Hope no I thank you. We don't play no games. Your wife don't play no. Your <laughs> wife don't play no motherfucking games. Y'all got kids. <laughs> I have a two year old, four year old, and a six month old. Yeah. Oh shit! Y'all still doing it? They we freak too. We still we <laughs> freaky too. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all, you're listening to another episode of Finesse Media Podcast, season three with the hilarious, legendary Hope Blood. Hope, thank you so much for joining the podcast. Thank you. All right. You're Again, welcome. check us out on thank all of our so social media. Thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead. I said thank you so much for having me. Definitely, definitely. Hold the line, Hope, man. And again, y'all, again, thank you for joining. This is another episode of Finesse Media Podcast, Season 3. We'll see you next week with something brand new. Thank you, Hope.